May God bless you. Welcome to our weekly message. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we just thank you for everything you've done for us. We thank you, Lord, for this message you're about to give us today, Lord. We ask, Father, that it will be your words and no one else's. Father, we just pray it will go forth and touch every soul you'd have it to touch, Father. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Let us go to 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse number 21. And the man Elkanah and all his house went up to offer unto the Lord the yearly sacrifice and his vow. But Hannah went not up. For she said unto her husband, I will not go up until the child be weaned. And then I will bring him, that he may appear before the Lord, and there abide forever. Hannah could not have a child. She had asked God to let her be able to have one, saying that if she could have a child, she would lend him to the Lord all the days of his life. And when she had that child, she weaned him. She brought him to the Lord. And there Samuel would grow up. He would go forth. And he would do the work of Almighty God. He was a prophet, a mighty prophet. And all the things that you read about in First and Second Samuel was him out there on the battlefield for God doing as he should do. Doing as God gave him to do. And Hannah, what a blessed woman for her child. We still read about this day and time. So many years after. And what a sacrifice she made also. And I tell you today, if you'll give it to God, if you'll dedicate to God something, a child, your life, whatever it happens to be, if you will dedicate it to Him, you will not regret it. You'll never regret anything that you do for the Lord. God has a way. Even when it feels like what we're doing is, is futile. Even when it feels like it's fruitless. If we're truly doing it in the right mind and right spirit and, and going forth for Him as we should in a humble heart and all that, God will bless it. There's a harvest for whatever it is. You know, Hannah gave her child. And you see, God also, He gave a child. For the sins of all mankind. He watched an innocent spotless lamb. Jesus Christ go forth you know. For the sins of you and the sins of me. The sins of all. You see God's willingness. He asked Abraham to take Isaac. Up there and sacrifice him. And yet he didn't suffer Abraham to do that. But yet he was willing to give his son for you and me. And as I look at it for what it is today. Just know God has so much more for all of us than we could ever fathom, than we could ever imagine. God's love for us is so much bigger. And look at your child if you have one and how much you love that child. Or look at how much your parents love you. If they've been good and godly parents or parents that are sincere, then you know they love you. No matter where you're at in life, no matter who you are, no matter what you've been through, you know your parents had a love for you. But how much more does an almighty God love His creation? How much more is something that I give to Him worth when it's all said and done? I can do things for this world. And I've got the fruit of it in this world. It'll last me a while. The things we do for God, they'll last eternally treasure in heaven. Something that doesn't go away. If I'll dedicate my life to Him, if I will give Him who I am, just, it's just a day to be about His business. It's a time to be about His business. I see things changing so much today in this time. In my country, I see things changing. Things that I never thought would come to pass. They're going forth. The, the Word says all these things will happen. All the the mess that's coming about, the, the laws changing, all the things that are going on. The Word says it's all coming. But yet, it's still, though it's not a surprise, it's still a disappointment. It's still something that just makes you think, man. And God's original formula, God's original system, 
The devil's always out to pervert it. He's always out to destroy it. He's always out to erode it wherever he can. His mission from day one has been to steal, to kill, and to destroy, and he's on his job. Always. If Christian people would be as, as out there to win souls as the devil seems to be to tear them down, we'd have so many saved. We'd have church houses full. We'd have tents full out there. We'd have street corners full of people preaching and praising. But yet, it seems like churches are just kind of content to just do the Sunday morning thing. And then right back to the world. The dedication, the commitment. It's where we're lacking today. Maybe not as individuals. You may be as dedicated as possible. But I see on the whole, on the whole, the body of Christ, the dedication is lacking. The willingness to get out there and go for God. To take this gospel to the ends of the earth. I met this group. They're called Global Blessings. It's a neat bunch. I've joined with them. They're out to just preach the gospel. And to spread it wherever it may go. And it seems to be just a few people. And yet it's a mighty tool. And it's an encouraging thing. And it's like you feed off one another. And you help each other. Because you kind of encourage and uplift one another. You pray for one another. And I just think that there's so many things just like that that can be done. So many ministries that could spring forth. So much, if it's dedicated to God, if it's given to God, if it's trusted in His hands, can go forth. All you ever hear when you watch television anymore on the religious channel seems to be about money, money, money. And I see that you can reach people very cheaply in this day. It costs nothing to go out there and live the Word of God. It doesn't cost you a dime to live this Bible. It doesn't cost you a dime to be about it, to learn it, to get it in your heart and to share it with somebody else. To share it with your family, with your friends, with the people at work, the people at school, the people wherever you are. Your circle right there. Everybody's not going to be Billy Graham right off or Charles Stanley or, or whoever. T.D. Jakes or, or whatever preacher that, that you watch, Joe Austin, all the different ones that you see preaching and they're reaching these multitudes. How about just living it and dedicating our life to Jesus and just let Him add whoever He'll add in our path. But just dedicating ourselves. As Hannah dedicated that child, she said, Lord, He's yours. You gave Him to me. From you He came. He's going right back to you. Because you'll make his life mean something. And look what his life means. Look what Samuel's life means today. It still means something to you. It means something to me. It means something to all creation. Mary had that baby. That holy child. You know that virgin birth. Jesus Christ. What that little boy did. Look what he grew up and did. Mary did you know. Brother Tommy Powers shared a song the other day about, Mary, did you know your baby boy was going to do all the things that he did? Who could realize that even though she knew that God had, had sent him and all that good stuff, still, look at Elizabeth who had little John the Baptist. Little John the Baptist out there, baptizing folks, preaching, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Make a way for the coming of the Lord. He's coming. That was a child dedicated to the Lord. A child that God took him from the beginning and made him into something. A child in God's almighty hand. Put your child in God's hand today and watch what God does. Put you in God's hand today and watch what God does because God is so able. He's so able and He doesn't care where you've been. He doesn't care what you've done. His grace and His mercy, they endureth forever. And His love is such that He's got open arms and He says, Come, my children, come to me. Jesus looked into Jerusalem and He said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that slayest the prophets and all this stuff, how many times would I have gathered you? It's a hen, does her chicks under her wings. And yet you wouldn't. Paraphrase and all that, but it's, 
It's what he said, and you can hear the hurt. You can feel the hurt as you read that passage. You know that Jesus, who had come for the lost sheep of the house of Israel, is brokenhearted to see all that's going on. And do you think Almighty God is not heartbroken to see this world and see His children going this way and that when if they would simply dedicate themselves to Him? Just as Hannah dedicated little Samuel. If they would dedicate themselves to Him. If we would dedicate ourselves to God more and more, it will pay off a hundredfold. I'm not talking about this Christian lottery that you see on TV where you get $5 and you're going to get 50 back or whatever. I'm not talking about any of that. I'm talking about something better. I'm talking about treasure in heaven. Money down here is just a number. I read this quote earlier. That money is just numbers. And numbers never end. So no matter how much money you have, it will never buy happiness. And that's a fact. You see these rich people killing themselves. You see all the, the celebrities that have got into drugs and everything else looking for the next high. And it's not there. Nothing that satisfies. Because there's a hole in us that only Jesus can satisfy. Only dedicate in this life, this person that we are, to Him. That's all that will truly fill this hole in our soul. And I encourage you today. Dedicate you and your people to the Lord. Those around you, dedicate them to God in prayer. Give your life to God. Give it to Him because one thing, it's the best thing you can do. Another, it is our reasonable service, just as Romans 12 says. After all, He gave us all that He gave us. Let us present ourselves a sacrifice unto Him. Now, how, how much can be gained from that? Everything. How much can be gained from saying, Lord... I want you to be my Lord and Savior. I want to follow after you all the days of my life. What can we gain from that? A kingdom. A kingdom that is more amazing than anything you could possibly fathom. More amazing than anything I could ever picture. That's what can be gained from that. A city on a hill whose builder and maker is God. And an almighty God. Who's the king of all of it. Being close to him. Being in his presence. You know, you go to a church service or something down here and you feel that good spirit and it just feels so nice. And sometimes you've had a rough day and it doesn't even matter what kind of day you've had. You go out there and you worship the Lord and it's just like, you feel like you're walking on sunshine. Can you imagine what it's like to be in a heaven where that's eternal, where that good feeling never dies? In this world, you get a good feeling and something's always ready to knock it right out of you. In this world, you get something good going and something's always willing to knock the wind right out of your sails every time. I wish I could tell you it wasn't so, but I cannot. It'll always be something. But in heaven, there's no worry of that. If we get our eyes on the prize more and more. And those around us, we will begin to see them, how much they need God. And how that you and I can take this gospel to them. There's people all around us every day. They're just looking for something that works. They're just looking for somebody that's got it together. They're just looking for something to model their life after because this world's not working. This world's not working for so many people. If you and I will be that light, we'll be that person. Some of us are the only Bible, as they say, that people will ever read. Let them see Christ in us, not us complaining and murmuring and bickering and gossiping and doing all the things that we so easily do. Let us begin to live this word. You know, they build these giant temples and all this other stuff. And sometimes what people need around them truly is just for them to make disciples that are going to take the light out there. To take the light out to a dark world. Jesus was light come into the world, but men love darkness rather than light, and I'm sure it's true. The devil's got all these neon lights and all this mess that they make. They make this artificial light. But they reject the true light. And this artificial light that we make, the electricity and all that, one day all that's going to be shut off. One day all of it's going to be gone. 
One day it's going to be us and God. We will stand before the almighty, holy, righteous creator of the universe. And what shall we say? Now he'll say, I ask you to dedicate your life to me. I ask you to dedicate your children, your, your world to me, to dedicate everything to me. I dedicated you, my son. He died on that cross for you. He loved you even though, even though they were yelling out to crucify. The same ones that he came to set free were yelling out, crucify him. The same ones, even though they would rather Barabbas go free than Jesus. Barabbas who had been a murderer and all the other things that he'd done. Even though they would rather have that than they would Christ. Even though. I still love you, children. I'm still here for you. What did you do for me? I did that for you. I gave you a world to run around in. I gave you the air you breathe. All the food that you ate. All the good things that happened to you. Everything. The sunshine. I kept the earth rotating at just the right angle. So that earthquakes and all manner of things didn't happen right there where you were. I was there through the storms. Through the rain. I was there for all of it. What did you do? What did you do with my son? What did you do with my word? What did you do with me? Will you come to me? He's saying now. But one day it'll be too late. One day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Why not do it now before it's too late? While there's breath in our body. While there's time to get to know Him. While there's time to see how good He is. You're not giving up anything. You think the world, you're giving up something amazing in the world. There's nothing in this world that's so amazing like you think it is. Nothing better than God. Nothing that will fill you like He will. Nothing that can sustain you like He can. Nothing that can take care of you when you're about to be evicted, when there's no food in the refrigerator, when there's no job, when there's none of that. Nothing else in this world can take care of you like He can, even though the world seems to have solutions. They're not eternal solutions. His is the eternal solution today. will not you come to Him today? will not you give Him who you are? will not you give Him your life dedicated to Him? He loves you more than you'll ever know. No matter what the enemy tries to throw at you, because he'll try to throw things at you, even when you come to God, he'll still be throwing stuff at you. But I tell you this, follow God. Just as Hannah gave that baby to the Lord, trusted Him with it. You can trust God with your own soul. You can trust Him. He'll take care of you. He's got it all in His hands. Why do we take so much in ours when He's got the whole thing in His hands? Trust in the One. It's the author and finisher of all of it. If you don't know Him today, if you haven't gave your life to Him, or if you simply want to recommit your life, if you slipped off and gone astray, pray this prayer with me now. Dear Lord, I'm a sinner and I ask You to forgive me of all my sins. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. Lord, I ask you to be Lord of my life. I ask you to come into my life and take over in every way. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. Pray that prayer and follow after him. Seek after him. Message me. I'm always glad to talk to anybody about the Lord. Always glad to pray with you. Encourage you. My name is Travis Williams. Be glad to. I just don't want to see anybody lost on that day. Just want to see people set free. Because I know he can. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we just thank you for all that you've done. We thank you for this message today, Lord. We just lift up all the people in our hearts, Lord. And we just ask you, Father, to have your perfect will, Lord. And so many of you to use this message for your glory, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May God bless you.